Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and we've got some bad news coming out of a WPN announcement from yesterday. All in-store play is still suspended, except now until June 1st. Now they're cutting it close, with good reason, uh, because I think it was suspended until May 1st before? Which is tomorrow? But of course they left it up to two days out, because they wanted to see, you know, the latest of what, you know, governments, individual, local level, national, all that were gonna do. Now, speaking of that, um, just as a little aside, they did not say where this applies to. I assume it's the same zones as before, which was like North America, somewhere and somewhere else. And then I think like parts of Asia were exempt or something, even though that makes no sense because most of them are still in lockdown, but okay. So it is kind of a regional thing, but it's like half the world. So with that in mind, they just simply said for the continued safety of the Magic community, the current suspension of in-store play has been extended until at least at least June 1st, we will continue to monitor the situation and make any further adjustments to in-store play, accounting for regional variants as appropriate. So that's another good thing to know. They are monitoring it up until the last possible point where they can still make a decision instead of, you know, making a decision guessing at what might happen two weeks from now. And if a certain region is showing, you know, such low infection rates or whatever, or something changes, and then they reopen and Wizards agrees with their decision to reopen probably as well, uh, they will resume operations in just that area. Now the numbers are still skyrocketing. There's basically zero signs of it slowing down, at least from a world standpoint. That graph is insane, but if we were to look at like just United States, it was hit fairly early. It's a fairly average density, just it's a good baseline to see like what's going on. We have the most cases at about uh, a million, 1.1 million just about, will be by the time you watch this. And the number of uh, known cases, active cases, deaths, you name it, has been a 45 degree angle up. And nothing, not one single thing is flattened off at all. If any place says they're flattening, they're lying. So to all the dumbasses that are like, I want to go back to restaurants and bars and theaters, um, well, it's worse than when this quarantine started, so you really probably don't. Now that said, I mean, do I think that individual places have cracked down too much? Yes, I mean, that whole, you can't drive from one of your houses to one of your other vacation houses and stay there. No, you can't do that. Like, what? why? It's, you jump in a car, you go there, and there's nobody there. If anything, you're helping. Like, what the actual hell were they thinking? Like, closing any place where you're not going to be within even a hundred feet of people, like a park. Like, what the hell was that? Let people go outside, okay? I ain't going to sneeze a hundred feet. Also, this doesn't cause sneezing. So yeah, okay, but that doesn't mean everybody screw it. Let's go outside and protest all three feet from each other. And by the way, one of the main protest leaders has just died of COVID-19. Fantastic. I mean, I don't normally say this. This may come across as rude. But she probably personally killed several thousand people by starting all these protests and encouraging people to think her way that, uh, besides the whole, hey, let's send a message, dumbass Facebook Karen bitch here just died. I think once you've killed that many people, you deserve to die. Just saying. Then again, those people made their own decision, but, you know, she's posting, you know, fake information and shit. So, you know, there's two sides to that. But if you're looking for an upside, because this sounds like all negatives, I was leading to it. There was the weirdest story to come out of this entire thing since it all started, by far. Uh, there was a prison where they tested every single prisoner, and 97% of the prisoners tested positive for the virus. 97% and 100% of them, if I'm not mistaken, if not, you know, 99.9% .9 or whatever, were asymptomatic. So they all actively have presence of RNAs, so presence of enough detectable viruses from this disease, in their bloodstream to be detected, but somewhere between none and the overwhelming majority are not sick. What the hell? I've heard some theories, but honestly, nobody knows how or why that's possible. I mean, with the current rates of infection and the, like the T rates and you know all the math and numbers and spread and tracking and all the real hard statistics that we have indicate that that's impossible. It can't happen. But the tests would say otherwise. So what's going on here? According to what we know, within a week, they should all be horribly sick. Like literally all of them. Uh, either that or there is a really high natural immunity that we don't know about and the spread of this is, is like 50 times worse than we thought, which earlier tests did not indicate that. And antibody presence tests did not indicate that. So how that many people can have it be exposed to it and have nothing happen is, is interesting. If if the entire U.S. was like that and 97 to 99% tested positive but are asymptomatic, we could all go back to work tomorrow. 
Then all the people like actually getting actual symptoms and dying from it, they're the anomaly. Also, to say this virus is UV resistant would be an understatement. They found allegedly positive samples of it in pollution particles in the upper atmosphere. How and why were they testing there? I don't know, but they did. I think upper atmosphere was a typo. Um, I'm, I'm going to say lower atmosphere. <laughs> so according to this, by the way, not peer reviewed study from this team called SETI. I don't know where they were. I think England or something. But they're saying, you know, six feet these nuts, more like six miles. So it's possible that um, a huge number of people were exposed to it in very, very low doses, like enough where, you know, the whole, oh, it lands on a cell. Okay, it destroys that one cell, but it's not enough to set off a histamine reaction yet. Not enough to get the attention of your immune system. And, you know, it divides from like one to a hundred to, you know, more to more to more. And they don't all succeed in infecting a cell, so it's not quite that drastic. But like the whole cellular replication thing, it, it starts at crazy low. And then because it started so low, it, it takes a while to get up there. And then it's been in your body for a while, long enough to get the attention of your immune system. Now, on the polar opposite, we've got doctors who were working with multiple infected people, did not know how bad it was. We're talking doctors, people who know how to stop viral infections. I mean, yeah, there's like fat doctors out there. Okay, there's some dumbass hypocrites. But other than that, why are 30-year-old perfectly healthy doctors at home getting rest, sleep, and fluids and doing everything right dying from this? They, they, they don't smoke. They don't have diabetes. What the hell? That's where the fairly confirmed theory came from, that the amount of the virus that you're exposed to is a thing. So if you're like patient after patient after patient, nonstop, all day, like eight plus hours a day, breathing in coronavirus samples... As soon as it starts to replicate, it's starting at like day five on like a normal person. So that mixed with the original problem with this virus, which is that our immune systems worldwide are not used to anything like this. Basically, if you catch the flu and then two years later you catch the flu again, your body will jump on the second one quicker because it resembles the influenza virus. I don't know how it works. I don't think scientists even know how it works. It's right up there with how and why do humans have allergies and why are they getting worse in recent decades? Nobody knows. Nobody has any idea. But somehow, through some kind of magic, um, similar viruses are responded to quicker and more effectively by the immune system. Anything based on like a corona-like molecule surrounding it with those type of surface proteins, not really widespread in the whole world. So our immune systems are like, well, maybe this is just, you know, not harmful. Until I think it's like once it triggers a certain amount of cell death, then you'll just get histamine and, and white blood cells reacting to everything. Like at that point, your immune system's like, well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is harmful. Maybe I should attack it. Well, because this attacks the lungs and you need those to breathe oxygen, um, it's not good if your immune system kind of hits the brakes for a while and plays wait and see. So that's why they're saying if there was a second wave, you know, next year, let alone like five, ten years from now, um, we'd have a lot less people hospitalized because the immune systems would jump on it and start killing it quicker and, you know, that kind of thing. Not to mention that I heard this one has difficulty mutating to the point where existing uh, T-cells and antibodies or whatever wouldn't intercept it. It's like playing Artifact Affinity in Modern. To call it Artifact Affinity, there's only a couple ways you could really honestly build it. And they're going to have some similar points. Otherwise, it's changed to the point where you would no longer call it that. It's a different thing. Influenza, exact opposite. That's why it mutates every year, multiple times a year. So back to the whole airborne thing or the exposure is more widespread thing than we thought and the whole like, oh, they, they found on a cruise ship it lives for 17 days on some surfaces, not three days. People still got to go to work. They got to be, you know, they're, they're further away from each other. They're washing their hands constantly and they're, you know, breathing through masks and everybody who could potentially be a carrier is theoretically breathing out through a mask, which is the important part of wearing a mask. Otherwise wearing it for breathing in does next to nothing. Then you got pollutants and small particles, including like dust. You know, it's not like, ooh, pollutants. Ooh, it's like, you know, dust that blew up from a thing. Any air particles may be carrying this as well as drops of water, which is why this is surviving uh, hot temperatures and summer climates. Now, influenza dies under UV very quickly. It, it needs a certain type of uh, particle. Same with rhinovirus, I think. It needs a certain size particle of uh, water to travel through the air. And uh, if it's less humid in the winter, it will. And if it's more humid in the summer, then it's like a smaller particle. And then that's not enough to carry it without it dying or something like that. And that's why people get colds and flus in the winter, not in the summer. That appears to not apply in any way, shape, or form to this virus, to the coronavirus. So the survivability and travelability of this in air surfaces and everything in between, you know, clothing, whatever, is really making people wonder after this prison news, 
if we've all been exposed to it, basically virtually everybody, unless you live like somewhere really weird, if you live in anything that resembles a city, you may have already been exposed to something called an inoculation dose. So, I mean, if this is true, why are people still getting sick that don't work in healthcare? You know, it's like if, if the dose matters and we're all constantly getting little teeny tiny doses in, in the air, clothes, surfaces, whatever, but standing far apart, wearing masks and everything we're doing is lowering the amount. Why are the numbers still going up at the rate that they are? It, it doesn't make sense. We shouldn't be seeing that many deaths. I mean, not every single one of these people is immunocompromised. Quite a few of them are. Quite a few of them are older, diabetic, fat, smokers, whatever. The amount of healthy people is very, very, very low. But maybe they had an undiagnosed condition. Or they have like a suppressed immune system because of something they aren't aware of. They could have caught it because they're coming off of something else. Maybe histamine suppressants in their allergy medication is, is causing it to not react correctly. Who knows? So what we may be finding out, unfortunately too late is that after the whole prison thing, we might virtually all be immune. And the whole quarantine might have turned out to be basically bullshit, despite the numbers of, of sheer, like, insane deaths. An insane, severe emergency room, like, get on a ventilator, levels of crazy. I mean, you look in, in Italy, holy shit. But most of the people there were um, elderly chain smokers. Just saying. So all the uninformed dumbasses who were saying initially, oh, this is no worse than the flu, it, no, this doesn't really affect anybody... I hate to say, but it turns out they were right, just not at the time and not based on science. It's based on what they wanted to be true and a bunch of bullshit that somebody posted on Facebook that they made up. So am I on the side of the people saying, oh, end the quarantine now, oh, it's government tyranny, I can do what I want, blah, 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 whatever, rights. Oh, uh, no, I still think that's insane, but it may turn out that within the next coming weeks, we find out, actually, it was safer or safe enough to do that, not safer. And then they're going to look like idiots because they would have destroyed the economy for nothing. But, you know, we didn't know that. Nobody knew that. Nobody worldwide knew that. Not one single scientist knew or even theorized that. The reason? Not enough tests. It's really that simple. Not enough antibody tests. Not enough immunity tests, which is the same thing. Not enough active RNA tests. We, we just couldn't make them quickly enough. It's just that simple. We couldn't get relevant statistics. And the statistics we had said that, no, this spreads like crazy. Like 3% of people die from it. Like, oh my God, we got to keep people away from each other. I think right now, if we were to test every single person in all of America, we might find something very interesting out. But with the antibody presence, which is like, not only are you not sick, but you're fully, full blast immune to it. You can create antibodies. You've got the, somebody told me it's not T cells, but whatever, the whatever the hell white blood cells too. If you got exposed to a huge amount of it, your immune system would kill it immediately. You would not get sick. You are immune. Those tests everywhere that I've ever heard of are coming up 10% on down. And, and the ones that are higher are completely biased. They, they put out like, like the UCLA one, they put out a, an ad that said, hey, we want to test you for Corona immunity. The people who were motivated to, to show up and sign up for it were the ones who thought they were exposed. And the people that were like, well, I've been in my house for a month and left three times. I, I don't really feel I need to be tested. Well, then they didn't show up to get tested, did they? So when they're like, oh, 14% of people are immune. No, no, it's probably closer to 1%. But are people building up very low level antibody counts due to sub inoculation levels or inoculation adjacent levels traveling through the air, going to the grocery store, whatever. I mean, you hear about these people where it's like, yeah, a meat packing plant where people are around each other two shifts for 16 hours, you know, so eight and eight plus they'll touch and, and you know, breathe the same air. They're all essential. They're working right next to each other. And those are, you know, hello, it's a meatpacking plant, sanitary conditions to say the least. And yet like the whole damn plant, you know, tested positive. That happened like five, 10 times at least in different places. So needless to say, if you go back to work, that's your workplace right there. Obviously. I mean, your workplace ain't as clean as a meatpacking plant. Just throwing that out there. But um, how many of those developed into severe stuff? I mean, we still don't know. And if, if the information's out there, they're not reporting on it. Very, very, very odd. So you've got workplaces where a couple people were exposed, you know, it's like 20 people, they all tested positive and like three or four of them died. And the rest got pretty bad with a severe fever and cough. So like 100% of them were exposed to it and like, damn, but is it the exposure level? Is that the only key that makes any sense? Because how the hell do you explain this prison? I mean, prisons even have a higher percentage of people that smoke. They've got a huge amount of like people from all over the place. So high, like, I guess you would say just genetic diversity. And I don't just mean, oh, one's Mexican and one's white. I mean, like literally like, 
actual like they're not related they're not family their ancestors didn't share any anything people from all over all in one building so we're talking like norwegian british whatever and people are like oh but you know there's there's actually a higher percentage of black and latino people in jail yeah yeah like a percentage relative ratio but it's not like there's like not white people in jail you know what i mean so young people old people people from like europe asia everywhere everybody's in prison so if it turns out they find out oh well like there's just a random genetic thing where 90 percent of native alaskans or like pacific islanders or something they would find out real quick because a whole bunch of crowded places in those places where people are very genetically similar like on you know the island of hawaii they would notice that you know none of them are getting sick now you go to the polar opposite prisons so if the vast majority of people are going to get sick it's going to be in a prison so how the hell do you explain this and criminals are just generally less healthy i mean it, this is odd the only thing common is their diet and the amount of sleep they get which is um probably better than the average american honestly <laughs> i mean it is very carefully calculated i didn't say food quality i said nutrition just fyi but beyond that there's no logical reason that they're doing better than we are it it, it makes no sense so that's the background to this huge mystery that just like blew up like two or three days ago when when these uh, test results came out so everyone everywhere has got a spotlight on this they're all rolling out tests in, in places like this trying to figure out what the hell's going on once we get distinct, repeatable, verifiable, peer-reviewed studies that are showing this is why these people are not catching it, these people are immune, and these people are getting super sick. This is the difference. These are the conditions. Once they figure that out and can say, with some certainty, you, 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 and you are safe, then everyone everywhere will have no reason to have at least certain groups of people to like either on their own choice or whatever come out of quarantine and and resume operations economically and with such odd statistics and new information coming out every day we could be a week or two away from some huge scientific breakthrough about oh this is how this virus works but the good news is this isn't just look at all the deaths look at this it's exactly as how it was two months ago three months ago four months ago nothing has changed it's working exactly the way we thought it's as bad as we thought the death rates are as bad as we thought Nobody's safe, nobody's immune, and this is terrible. Like, we have now moved on from that to, this is weird and we've got some weird anomalies here. And that's good, we just need to explain them. What is the difference here? What is going on? So that's why I think Wizards is very smart in saying, hey, we're gonna tentatively make it June 1st because, hello, look at the death numbers, but we're still watching it because anything could happen. So... Unfortunately, I, I do believe May 15th-ish was the uh, Ikoria delayed pre-release date. That has now just been canceled. They're, they're just, they got to move on. The next set's coming out after this. Uh, it hasn't been fully canceled. They're still allowing at-home stuff, but in most places, at least in the U.S., LGSs are no, not allowed to operate at all. Um, nothing saying they can't take online orders, go there by themselves, package up and send it in the mail, or drop it off or deliver it in person. Uh, most... Places are not restricting that, and if they are, their governors are idiots. So they are still allowing at-home pre-releases, but that's it. That is exclusively what you're allowed to do as a uh, LGS right now. Also, they got the whole F&M at home thing, which I've heard has been, you know, mixed results. So, I mean, they've uh, suspended stat tracking. They say there's no reason to try to reopen earlier faker numbers or something about sales. They're, they're basically just going to go back to, what, like January or something. Um, I think it's like the two most accurate set releases so basically quarters they're just going to use that so they basically said don't worry about sales in may for for like future allocations if they're really low in may and and april you won't get penalized they're not even going to use these numbers they're just going to basically throw them out in fact they said uh they've taken a snapshot of metrics beginning february 15th that seems a little early or uh, late i should say that's <laughs> Fe beginning february 15th they should do it ending february 15th but okay and I think probably if you haven't gotten your pre-release kits yet, the allocations are down and they will certainly be way down for the next set if, if people aren't back open. But we might be. I mean, we're, we're close to a breakthrough on this. And plus, whether we find out something interesting and provable or not about this virus, there are human trials going on right now as of like a week or two ago of some pretty promising vaccines. Now, vaccine approval, follow-up, testing, and widespread production for like 7 billion people, that's a different story. I think we're more likely to undo this whole quarantine thing based on knowledge at a certain point or based on just, oh my God, so damn many people got sick that there's nobody left to get sick, aka herd immunity. Uh, except for one little catch that a bunch of people in China quite a while ago, and this has been repeated in other areas, they've had it, recovered, and then tested positive as a carrier for it again. 
that's not good. So you can be like such a weak immune response that it's like sitting in your lungs and you're breathing it out. You're not going to get infected because your immune system is going to kill it at a rate higher than it replicates, but it's there and replicating or you're like carrying it. Nobody really knows how that works. It seems odd, but, uh, yeah, the asymptomatic spread extending to people who should be 100% immune to it. That's not good. That kind of pumps the brakes on the whole, okay, enough damn people have been sick. Well, cool, they're still going to be carriers, so you can't open everything up and just say, oh, only 30% of people are left to get sick or whatever because everybody else is carrying it. So that remaining 30% is virtually guaranteed to get sick then. If carriers can spread it to other immune carriers, then it's, it's just going to be everybody has it. Everybody breathing on you is going to kill you, potentially. So I guess, uh, you know, there's more important things in the world than Magic the Gathering. So if you're still down about this, just remember that. And remember, the lack of people driving around has caused pollution to drop so low that I can see that this video is over. Oh, that joke was terrible. So um, hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss the latest up-to-date news on anything going on with magic and corona and everything else, events, scheduling, changes, policy changes, all that stuff. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next video.